Kelly Hill, Executive Editor for RCR Wireless News. And I'm here today with Ken Bednas, who is VP of Application Engineering for Tellit. How are you, Ken? Doing great, Kelly. Good, good to have you here. Um, so we're gonna be talking about 3G network sunsetting. So maybe let's start out with what is that and why does it matter? Yeah, 3G sunsetting is, is extremely important because it's the removal of the 3G network. So the sunset is not starting to take down the network, but it's actually the network going away. It's being sunset, being turned off. And so it's a really important time for everybody to check what technology they're using out there uh, to make sure they're not gonna be affected by the 3G sunset. Okay. And do you have any idea, do we have any idea how many devices are still on these networks and what, or what kind of devices they are? Yes. You know, um, so 3G encompasses uh, a few different technologies. 3G encompasses, you know, CDMA technologies, which are uh, 3G PP2 technologies. So, um, you know, 1XRTT or EVDO. 3G also encompasses 3G PP technologies that uh, like UMTS and HSPA. So all the leading network operators around the U.S. Um, all support 3G technologies today, and those are the technologies that are being sunset. Uh, when I look at statistics out there from the network operators and also from uh, groups like 5G Americas, there's a number over 80 million 3G devices still in network today. And so those are a, a variety of different uh, devices, you know, including connected car, uh, there's some tablet and notebook computers, but the majority of them are IoT devices. So it could be anything from you know, metering, electric water meters. It could be um, vehicle tracking devices. There's, there's enormous number of 3G vehicle tracking devices out there and also uh, home security devices. So a lot of the uh, co connected homes. Uh, so it, it really spans a lot of different IoT devices. Okay. And can you talk at all about sort of the, uh, the time frame during which these devices were originally deployed? You know, what uh, you know you mentioned the types of devices if somebody has those type of devices uh, as a as a device base you know when might those have been put out into the into the market yeah absolutely you know when we talk about 3g we're talking about third generation technologies and typically you know we started off with with analog which is 1g we went to digital 2g and then a, a generation of 3g digital technology and a technology generation typically lasts around 20 years 15 to 20 years and so 3G was uh, deployed in the U.S. and North America in the early 2000s, you know, and it's going to be, you know, being sunset here over the next few years by multiple network operators um, in North America. And so a lot of these devices for IoT were put into place, um, I would say, around 2010, you know. So, you know, 3G started replacing 2G devices in, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011, but they continued to be deployed up through this year. So we still have partners deploying 3G devices today. Um, some of the networks are, are allowing 3G activations, you know, through last year into this year. So really the transition over to 4G LTE is just taking place now. And this is why it's such an important event that's gonna affect millions of devices out there. Okay. So you talked a little bit about when those, when those have gone into the market, um, including up, up to and including now. Um, I, I know that uh, at least one network, network operator has made some public statements about turning down their 3G at the end of this year, and, uh, but it's expected to happen for pretty much everybody in the next couple of years as operators shift their focus um, to more LTE and even and to 5G as well. Um, so what do companies need to be doing now to start thinking about this transition? Yeah, I think the first thing we need to do is take a look and understand what technology you're using. Everybody likes to say, hey, I'm using cellular technology in my IoT device, but what is under the hood? You know, are you using a 3G technology? Are you using an LTE technology? So it's a great opportunity to kind of reevaluate where your product is. Um, you know, a lot of the IoT devices that were built on, you know, 1G or 2G or 3G, those are all cell phone technologies. And so we were kind of shoehorning in IoT devices into these legacy technologies. So there's a huge opportunity out there for people to provide a better user experience by moving to 4G LTE because there's a lot of different flavors of 4G LTE and some of them are specific for IoT. So we're talking about better, uh, uh, you know, smaller size, better battery life, uh, you know, lower cost devices. And so the step number one is really understanding what technology you're deploying today and what technology you have in the field for your existing devices. Okay. And then also, 
what will that transition look like? Will it mean, you know, deploying a whole new device to the field? Will it mean, um, you know, what will it mean for companies who need to make that transition from 3G to 4G? Yep. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, step number one is going to be for new devices going into the field, you know, making sure that you're using a 4G LTE technology to make sure you have a good 10 years ahead of you. And so step number one is taking a look at what you're deploying now. Uh, step number two is understanding what about the units in the field, right? How do I, uh, you know, get a longer lifespan out of those devices? Do I send replacement devices out there to customers or consumers? Um, do I have to replace hardware? Some of our sophisticated customers have been through these technology changes before because they've been doing M10 IoT for over 10 years. And so they live through the transition from 2G to 3G. And so some of these, some of these designs are pretty slick now for maybe a home security system where they actually mail in uh, a new data card to the device. So it's user exchangeable. So they can actually pull out 3G radio and plug in the 4G LTE radio. So that's, that's, Kind of the easiest we've seen we've and we've seen other scenarios where people need to do truck rolls because they need another five or ten years out of uh their device that they recently deployed and they're not going to get it with 3g okay um can you give us any any kind of a of a sneak peek at you, you know you mentioned that the lte technologies offer multiple options for you know what your upgrade might look like um can you give us just a, a quick summary of you know what are some of the options are that people are going to be um choosing from yeah yeah absolutely well, you know when it comes to 4g lte there's kind of three main flavors that we talk about with our partners and, and one is there's the you know high high higher end higher data speeds low latency devices which is anything from lte category four you know up to gigabit lte so we're talking about upload speeds of 50 megabits or higher and then download speeds from 100 megabits up through you know uh 1.2 gigabits so you know, people that need a better user experience for downloading data, they have the high-end uh, LTE devices. Um, we have also, you know, LPWA now with 4G LTE with CAT M1, where you can reduce size, cost, power. And so somebody that has a battery-operated device can take advantage of this new technology. And then you have a more of a LTE CAT 1, which is a pure replacement for 3G, which provides the same type of data speeds and user experience. And so now is a good opportunity to kind of, you know, improve your user experience with your IoT device by having a selection of different technologies. And can you give us a sense of, you know, where Telet's portfolio has moved over the years? And, you know, what are some things that people might be familiar with that go, oh, you know, now I need to, to move on to the next, the next latest and greatest? Yeah, so, you know, one of our claims to fame is our flagship 910 family. And so we've done a tremendous job, you know, helping the IoT industry grow by providing the same form factor and size. So we allow customers to select their technology based on um, no redesign. So basically it's just buying different components. So we have, for example, we have an ME 910, which is the low end to reduce, you know, size, cost, power. And then we have an LE 910 CAT1 product, which is really focused on a pure 3G replacement. And then we have, you know, uh, data cards and, and LE910 CAT4 products for a better user experience if they're, if they're downloading data or transmitting, you know, lar large amounts of data. Okay. Great. Well, thanks so much for the insights, Ken. Really, really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Kelly.